Starbucks horror. In the heart of a bustling city, a newly opened Starbucks stood on the corner of a busy intersection. Its sleek, modern design, with large glass windows and cozy interior, attracted a myriad of customers. From weary office workers seeking a caffeine fix, to groups of friends looking for a place to unwind. However, beneath its welcoming facade, an eerie undercurrent whispered through the air, setting the stage for inexplicable occurrences. On a particularly dreary evening, as the sun dipped below the skyline, casting long shadows on the streets, a young barista named Emma was closing up for the night. She had heard rumors of the location being cursed, but she shrugged them off as mere urban legends. As she wiped down the espresso machines and dipped the lights, a cold gust of wind swept through the cafe, causing her to shiver. The door had been securely locked and all the windows were shut. There was no logical explanation for the sudden chill. As Emma continued her tasks, she couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. The hairs on the back of her neck stood on end, and a sense of dread filled the pit of her stomach. She hurried to finish her duties, eager to leave the unsettling atmosphere of the empty cafe behind. However, as she reached for her coat, the lights flickered violently, plunging the room into darkness. A scream caught in her throat as she fumbled for her phone, using it as a makeshift torch. The beam of light from her phone revealed the cafe in a sinister hue. The once cozy chairs and tables now seemed like twisted silhouettes lurking in the shadows. Emma's heart raced as she made her way to the emergency exit. But with each step, an inexplicable force seemed to pull her back, as if the cafe itself wanted her to stay. Suddenly, the sound of a cup shattering echoed through the silent space, followed by a low, haunting melody that seemed to emanate from the speakers. Emma froze, realizing the music system had been turned off long before closing. The melody grew louder, a haunting tune that seemed both ancient and otherworldly, weaving through the air like a sinister lullaby. In a panic, Emma dashed for the door, her breaths coming in short gasps. Just as she reached the threshold, a shadowy figure materialized in front of her, its features obscured by the darkness. She could feel its gaze upon her, cold, and unyielding. With a final surge of adrenaline, Emma pushed past the apparition and burst out into the night, the door slamming shut behind her with a force that rattled the windows. Gasping for air, Emma looked back at the cafe, half expecting the figure to be following her, but the windows revealed nothing but the empty interior of the Starbucks as if nothing had happened. Shaken to her core, Emma vowed never to return, but the haunting melody lingered in her mind, a chilling reminder of the night's terrors. The next morning, the cafe opened as usual, with no sign of the previous night's horrors. Customers flowed in and out, oblivious to the dark secrets that lurked within, but Emma knew better. She knew that something unspeakable resided in that Starbucks, a malevolent presence that defied explanation. And as the city woke to another day, the cafe on the corner stood silent, its story waiting to ensnare the next unwary soul. In the previous chapter of Starbucks Horror, we delved into the unsettling occurrences plaguing the quaint Starbucks, located on the edge of a small, seemingly tranquil town. The air was thick with an unspoken dread as the staff
staff and regulars started noticing oddities that couldn't simply be brushed off as mere coincidences. The story picks up on a foggy Thursday evening when the cafe, usually a sanctuary for coffee lovers, becomes the stage for a more sinister narrative. As the evening wore on, the fog outside thickened, swallowing the town in a ghostly embrace. Inside the Starbucks, the warmth and chatter provided a stark contrast to the eerie silence outside. Sarah, a barista known for her unflappable nature, was closing up for the night. The last customers, a couple of teenagers engrossed in their laptops, showed no sign of leaving despite the hour. The antique clock above the door chimed ten. Its echo a little too resonant, a little too foreboding. Suddenly, the lights flickered, casting long, dancing shadows across the walls. Sarah attributed it to the storm brewing outside, but the air inside felt charged, heavy with an unexplained anticipation. The espresso machine, which had been turned off, sputtered to life, emitting a series of guttural groans that seemed almost communicative. The cups on the shelves rattled slightly, as if disturbed by an unseen presence. The teenagers looked up, their faces pale in the glow of their screens. Did you hear that? One of them whispered, his voice barely carrying over the sound of the wind howling against the windows. Before Sarah could respond, a cold gust swept through the cafe. Despite all doors and windows being securely shut, it carried with it a faint, almost imperceptible whisper that seemed to say, leave now. Panic took hold as the temperature dropped, breaths becoming visible in the frigid air. The lights flickered again, more violently this time plunging the cafe into darkness for a few heart-stopping moments. When the emergency lights finally clicked on, casting a dim red hue across the room, Sarah and the teenagers realized they were no longer alone. Standing by the door was a figure, shrouded in the mist that had seeped in from some unknown crevice. Its form was indistinct, its presence was undeniable, a palpable entity of dread that seemed to feed on their fear. The air was thick with the scent of stale coffee and something else, something metallic and unsettlingly familiar. Sarah's mind raced, her barista training ill-equipped to handle the unscripted horror unfolding before her. The figure moved or rather, glided towards them, its movements unnaturally fluid. The whispers grew louder, a cacophony of voices that seemed to emanate from the very walls, urging them to flee. But before they could move, the door swung open on its own, revealing the fog-drenched night outside. The figure paused, as if contemplating its next move then dissipated into the mist, leaving behind a chilling silence and a lingering question. What did it want? As the story hangs in this moment of eerie calm, the truth remains obscured, hidden in the shadows that seem to cling a little too tightly to the corners of this Starbucks, the line between the ordinary and the supernatural blurs further, inviting the reader to ponder what lies beyond the veil of reality in this seemingly mundane setting. The story continues, its path unwinding into the darkness, promising more twists and turns in the chapters to come. In the eerie silence following the apparition's disappearance, Sarah and the teenagers stood frozen, their hearts pounding in unison against the oppressive stillness of the cafe. 
the red glow of the emergency lights bathed the room in an otherworldly hue, casting elongated shadows that seemed to writhe and twist of their own accord. The fog outside pressed against the windows, creating an impenetrable barrier between them and the outside world. The sense of isolation was palpable. The cafe transformed into an island amidst a sea of mist. Sarah's practical mind struggled to rationalize the events, to find a logical explanation that could dispel the mounting dread. But the whispering had not ceased. It had merely receded to the edge of perception, a sinister undercurrent to the silence. With a shaky voice, one of the teenagers, Alex, broke the silence. We need to leave now. His words were a catalyst, breaking the spell of fear that held them immobile. Sarah nodded, her role as protector instinctively coming to the fore. She ushered them towards the back door, the one employees used for deliveries and breaks, hoping it would offer a safe passage out of the nightmare. But as they approached, a chilling realization stopped them in their tracks. The back door, always left ajar during business hours for easy access, was now firmly shut. More disturbingly, a thin layer of ice had formed over its surface. The frost patterns swirling into intricate designs that seemed to pulsate with an unnatural life. The temperature inside the cafe plummeted further, their breaths now coming out in frantic, visible puffs. The espresso machine, silent since its earlier outburst, began to whir and hiss again, as if mocking their desperation. Cups and saucers rattled on their shelves, creating a cacophonous symphony that seemed to be orchestrated by an unseen conductor. In a last ditch effort to escape, they turned to the front door only to find the fog had thickened to an opaque wall, obscuring their vision beyond a few inches. The door itself felt unnaturally cold to the touch, resisting all efforts to open it, as if sealed by the very air. Trapped and with options dwindling, Sarah's mind raced for solutions. The cafe had a small basement, used primarily for storage, rarely visited and easily forgotten. It was a long shot, but it might offer a temporary refuge, a place to regroup, and perhaps find another way out. As they made their way to the basement door, hidden behind a curtain in a corner of the cafe, the whispering intensified, a maddening chorus that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere. The door creaked open, revealing a narrow staircase descending into darkness. With no other choice, they descended, the light from Sarah's phone casting eerie shadows on the walls. The basement was cold, far colder than the cafe above, and filled with an oppressive silence that seemed to absorb sound. As they reached the bottom, the door above them slammed shut, plunging them into darkness. The phone's light flickered and died, leaving them in an impenetrable blackness. The silence was broken by a sound that chilled their blood. A soft, mocking laughter that seemed to echo from the depths of the earth. The story leaves them there, in the suffocating darkness of the basement the laughter reverberating around them, a promise of horrors yet to unfold, what lies in wait in the shadows, and what fate befalls Sarah and the teenagers remains to be seen in the next chilling chapter of Starbucks Horror. In the oppressive darkness of the basement, the mocking laughter faded, leaving Sarah and the teenagers enveloped in a silence so dense it felt like a physical force, 
pressing in on them from all sides. The air was thick, charged with an anticipation of something lurking just beyond the reach of their senses. Their eyes struggled to adjust, but the darkness was absolute, a void untouched by light. The cold seeped into their bones, a creeping chill that whispered of forgotten things, of secrets buried deep beneath the earth. Sarah's heart raced, every beat a loud drum in the silent expanse of the basement. She fumbled in her pocket for her phone, hoping against hope that it would spring to life, that its light would pierce the darkness, but it remained dead, a useless piece of technology in the face of an ancient, unseen terror. Alex's voice, barely a whisper, broke the silence. Do you feel that? he asked, his voice trembling. The question was unnecessary. The answer was written in the quickened breaths and shivering bodies of his companions. There was a presence with them in the darkness, something ancient and malevolent. Its attention focused on the intruders who dared to disturb its domain. The floor beneath them seemed to pulse, a slow, rhythmic throb that resonated with the beating of their hearts. It was as if the very ground was alive, breathing in sync with the unseen entity that shared their prison. Then, from the farthest corner of the basement, came a sound that made their blood run cold, a scraping as of stone against stone. It was deliberate, measured, the sound of something heavy being dragged across the concrete floor. The sound grew louder, closer, a relentless approach that promised an encounter with whatever lurked in the shadows. In a desperate attempt to find a weapon, anything to defend themselves, Sarah's hands brushed against a cold metal object. Her fingers closed around it, recognizing the shape of an old, rusty wrench that had been left behind by a maintenance worker. It was a small comfort, a meager defense against the unknown, but it steadied her nerves. The scraping stopped, replaced by a heavy, labored breathing that filled the room, as if the very air was being drawn in and expelled by a colossal lung. The temperature dropped further, a supernatural cold that seemed to freeze time itself. And then they saw it, a faint phosphorescent glow emanating from the corner where the sound had originated. It was not a light, but the absence of darkness, a chilling otherworldly luminescence that outlined a form too grotesque for the human mind to comprehend. The shape shifted, undulating in the dim glow, its form fluid and ever-changing, a nightmare made manifest. The entity moved toward them, each movement accompanied by the sound of grinding stone. The glow intensified, revealing glimpses of a form that defied the laws of nature, a being that belonged to a different reality, a different dimension of horror. The story leaves our protagonists facing this unimaginable horror, their fate uncertain, the nature of the entity and its intentions shrouded in mystery. What happens next in the bowels of the Starbucks the suffocating embrace of the ancient darkness is a tale yet to be told, leaving the door open for even darker revelations in the continuation of Starbucks horror. In the suffocating darkness of the basement, the mocking laughter that had echoed so menacingly began to fade, leaving behind an oppressive silence that seemed almost tangible. Sarah, Alex, and the other teenager, Mia, huddled together, their fear a shared 
bond in the face of the unknown horrors lurking in the shadows. The air was bitingly cold, each breath a sharp intake that did little to fill their lungs with warmth. As their eyes slowly adjusted to the darkness, the faint outline of the basement's contents began to materialize. Old furniture covered in dusty sheets, stacks of unopened boxes, and the forgotten detritus of the cafe above formed a labyrinthine maze. The silence was so complete, it felt as if the very stone walls were holding their breath, waiting for something unspeakable to break the stillness. Suddenly, a soft scuttling sound echoed through the basement, as if something small and unseen was moving in the darkness. The sound seemed to come from all directions at once, disorienting and impossible to trace. Sarah's phone, previously dead, flickered to life in her hand, casting a feeble pool of light that did little to penetrate the surrounding gloom. The scuttling sound grew louder, more frenzied, as if whatever was making it was growing excited by their fear. Shadows seemed to dance just beyond the edge of the light. Shapes that were too fluid, too sinuous to be anything natural. The air grew colder still, a creeping chill that seemed to seep into their very bones. With a sudden burst of courage, or perhaps desperation, Alex stepped forward, his voice barely above a whisper. Who's there? What do you want from us? The silence that followed was almost a palpable entity, thick with anticipation. Then, without warning, the scuttling stopped. In its place, a low, guttural growl resonated through the basement, a sound so filled with malice it seemed to vibrate in their very souls. The phone's light flickered once more, casting brief, stroboscopic shadows that played tricks on their eyes. In one fleeting moment of illumination, they saw it, a glimpse of something horrific, a shape too grotesque to comprehend, its form obscured by the shifting shadows. Panic took hold, driving them deeper into the maze of forgotten debris. The growling followed, a constant companion to their frenzied escape. They stumbled upon an old, rusted door set into the far wall, its existence previously unnoticed, hidden as it was behind a large, draped cloth. With no time to ponder its origins, they pushed against the door, which groaned in protest before swinging open with a chilling screech. Beyond the door lay a tunnel, its origins and purpose unknown, the walls lined with ancient bricks that seemed to whisper secrets of a bygone era. The growling was closer now, a relentless predator in pursuit of its prey. The tunnel stretched out before them, a narrow passage that promised either salvation or doom. As they entered the tunnel, the door slammed shut with a finality that echoed like a death knell. The growling ceased abruptly, replaced by the sound of their own ragged breathing and the distant drip of water from unseen sources. The tunnel was pitch black, the darkness a tangible force that threatened to overwhelm their senses. Their journey through the tunnel was a blind, desperate scramble hands outstretched to ward off the unseen dangers lurking just beyond the reach of their fingertips. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and something else, something cloying and decayed, just when the oppressive darkness seemed too much to bear. A faint light appeared in the distance, a glimmer of hope amidst the all-encompassing gloom, 
but as they neared the source of the light, it became apparent that this was no ordinary illumination. It was an eerie, phosphorescent glow that seemed to emanate from the very walls of the tunnel, casting an otherworldly light that twisted their shadows into grotesque caricatures. The story leaves them there, drawn towards the unnatural light, the tunnel's secrets looming just out of reach, what lies at the end of the tunnel, and the nature of the light that beckons them forward remains shrouded in mystery, promising further twists in the dark tale of Starbucks horror. Drawn inexorably towards the phosphorescent glow, Sarah, Alex, and Mia moved with a mixture of fear and fascination. The light seemed to pulse gently, casting eerie shadows that danced along the tunnel walls, giving the impression of movement just at the edge of their vision. The air grew colder as they progressed, the dampness clinging to their skin like a second layer, heavy and suffocating. As they neared the source of the light, the tunnel began to widen, the rough brick walls giving way to a more structured, almost ceremonial architecture. The ground beneath their feet felt less like dirt and more like hewn stone, worn smooth by the passage of uncounted years. The glow intensified, revealing intricate carvings on the walls, depicting scenes that were both fascinating and horrifying in their detail. The images seemed to tell a story, one of ritual and sacrifice, of a darkness that had been worshipped and feared in equal measure. The tunnel opened into a vast underground chamber, the ceiling lost in shadows far above. The source of the light became clear, a large crystal formation at the center of the room, emitting a soft, pulsating glow that illuminated the chamber with an otherworldly light. Around the crystal were arranged a series of stone altars, each bearing markings that were eerily similar to the carvings on the tunnel walls. The air in the chamber was charged, electric, with an energy that seemed to hum just beneath the surface. The sense of an ancient presence was overwhelming, as if the very air was alive with the whispers of the past. Sarah, Alex, and Mia felt an unspoken urge to approach the crystal, drawn by a force they could neither explain nor resist. As they stepped closer, the ground beneath them began to tremble, a low vibration that grew in intensity until the very air seemed to shudder. The crystal's glow brightened, casting sharp, angular shadows that twisted and writhed like living things. A deep, resonant sound filled the chamber, emanating from the crystal itself. A sound that was not heard, but felt, vibrating through their bodies and gripping their hearts with an icy fear. Suddenly, the chamber was filled with figures, spectral forms that materialized from the shadows features obscured by the shifting light. These apparitions moved with purpose, their actions synchronized, as if enacting a ritual long forgotten by the world above. They paid no heed to the intruders, their focus entirely on the crystal and the altars that surrounded it. Sarah, Alex, and Mia found themselves caught in the midst of this ghostly ceremony unable to move, as if held in place by an unseen force, the spectral figures began to chant in a language that was unfamiliar, yet somehow understood a plea, a summoning that seemed to resonate with the very
very walls of the chamber. The crystal pulsed more rapidly, its light now blinding, casting the chamber into stark relief. The figure's chant reached a crescendo, the air vibrating with the power of their voices. And then, from the depths of the crystal, something began to emerge, a form, dark and amorphous, that coalesced into a presence so malevolent, so filled with ancient hatred, that the very air seemed to curdle in its wake. The story hangs in this moment of terror. The true nature of the crystal and the apparitions revealed, their ancient ritual interrupted by the unwitting intruders. What lies ahead for Sarah, Alex, and Mia, and the malevolent force they have unwittingly awakened, remains shrouded in the depths of the underground chamber. A tale of darkness and dread that is far from over as the malevolent presence emerged from the crystal. The chamber's atmosphere thickened with an almost palpable sense of dread. The spectral figures, their chant reaching a fever pitch, seemed to bow reverently towards the dark form, acknowledging its dominion over this ancient sanctum. Sarah, Alex, and Mia still held captive by the unseen force, could only watch in horror as the entity began to take on a more defined shape, its form both mesmerizing and terrifying. The entity, now partially materialized, radiated an aura of absolute darkness, a void that seemed to swallow the light emitted by the crystal. Its eyes, if they could be called that, glowed with a malevolent fire, casting an infernal light that danced across the chamber walls. The air around it seemed to warp and twist, the very fabric of reality bending under the weight of its ancient power. As the entity's form solidified, the spectral figures ceased their chanting and began to dissipate their forms melting away into the shadows from whence they came, leaving the three friends alone with the awakening horror. The entity turned its gaze upon them, and in that moment, they felt an overwhelming invasion of their minds, a malevolent force probing their deepest fears and darkest secrets. The ground beneath them began to crack and heave, as if the very earth was reacting to the entity's malevolence. From these fissures, tendrils of shadow snaked out, reaching for the trio with an insatiable hunger. The crystal's light, once a beacon in the oppressive darkness, now seemed to falter, its glow dimming in the presence of the dark entity. In a desperate bid for escape, Sarah reached out, her hand brushing against the crystal. At her touch, a surge of energy burst forth, a brilliant light that momentarily pushed back the encroaching darkness. The entity recoiled, its form flickering under the assault. And in that brief respite, the unseen force holding them in place weakened. Seizing the moment, Alex and Mia rallied, their survival instinct overcoming their terror. Together, they pushed towards the crystal, their combined touch amplifying its light. The chamber was bathed in a blinding radiance, casting stark shadows that writhed in agony as the light seared them. But the entity was not so easily vanquished with a roar that shook the foundations of the chamber. It fought against the light, its form coalescing into a towering figure of shadow and malice. The crystal's light, though powerful, began to flicker, its energy ebbing under the relentless assault of 
the dark force. The story leaves our trio in a precarious standoff, their fate hanging in the balance. The crystal, their only source of hope, flickers dangerously, threatened by the overwhelming power of the ancient entity. As the light and darkness clash within the ancient chamber, the outcome remains uncertain. The narrative poised on the edge of a knife, promising further trials and tribulations in the saga of Starbucks horror. As the malevolent form emerged from the crystal, its shape became more defined, a mass of shadows that twisted and writhed as if in agony, expanding and contracting with a life of its own. The spectral figures around the chamber ceased their chanting and knelt in reverence or fear, their forms flickering like flames in a breeze. The air grew thick with a palpable sense of dread, the darkness pressing in from all sides. Sarah, Alex, and Mia, still held immobile by the unseen force, watched in horror as the shadowy entity began to take on a more humanoid shape, its features grotesquely distorted, as if molded from the very stuff of nightmares. Its eyes, if they could be called eyes, burned with a malevolent light, piercing the gloom of the chamber with their malevolence. The ground beneath them continued to shake, small stones and dust falling from the ceiling as the entity's power grew. The crystal at the center of the chamber pulsed in sync with the entity, its light now a beacon that seemed to feed the darkness, allowing it to grow, to gain substance and form. Without warning, the force holding the trio in place dissipated leaving them gasping for breath, their limbs weak and trembling. The spectral figures began to rise, turning their hollow gazes upon Sarah, Alex, and Mia, who realized with a sinking heart that they were not merely witnesses to this unholy ritual, but a part of it, drawn into the ancient ceremony as unwilling participants. In a desperate bid for escape, they turned and ran, weaving through the ghostly congregation towards the tunnel from which they had emerged. But the chamber seemed to shift and change around them, the walls undulating like the inside of a living creature, the exits appearing and disappearing in the blink of an eye. Behind them, entity let out a sound that was both a roar and a scream, a cacophony of voices that seemed to echo from the very depths of the earth. The spectral figures moved to block their path, their movements slow and deliberate, yet inexorable in their pursuit. The trio found themselves driven back towards the center of the chamber, towards the crystal and the dark entity that now seemed to dominate the space, its form towering over them, a melangette of shadows and malice. The air was electric, charged with energy that made their skin crawl and their hair stand on end. In a final defiant act, Sarah grabbed a loose stone from the ground and hurled it at the crystal, hoping break the connection between it and the entity. The stone flew true, striking the crystal with a sharp crack that resounded like thunder through the chamber. For a moment, everything stopped. The spectral figures froze, the entity's roar cut off mid-cry, and the light from the crystal flickered and dimmed. Then chaos erupted, the crystal shattered sending shards of glowing energy in all directions. 
piercing the shadows and the spectral figures alike, the entity let out a shriek of rage and pain, its form dissipating into the air like smoke in a strong wind. The chamber shook violently, stones and debris falling from the ceiling as the very foundation of the place seemed to come undone. In the midst of the turmoil, a faint light appeared, not the malevolent glow of the crystal, but the warm, welcoming light of the sun, filtering in from a crack in the chamber ceiling. With a rush of hope, Sarah, Alex, and Mia scrambled towards the light, climbing over fallen debris and dodging the collapsing chamber around them. As they reached the source of the light, they found themselves at the base of a narrow shaft that led up to the surface, the sunlit sky visible far above. The way was treacherous, the walls crumbling and unstable, but it was their only chance of escape from the collapsing chamber and the ancient darkness they had unleashed. The story leaves them there, at the base of the shaft, of the outside world just within reach, yet so far away, the fate of the entity, the spectral figures, and the ancient chamber itself remains uncertain, as does the fate of Sarah, Alex, and Mia, as they begin their perilous ascent towards the light, towards safety, or perhaps towards a new horror that awaits them in the light of day. The tale of Starbuck's horror remains unfinished, the darkness lurking just beneath the surface, waiting for the next chapter to unfold. Clinging to the precarious walls of the shaft, Sarah, Alex, and Mia ascended, their every movement dislodging small stones and dust, a constant reminder of the fragility of their escape route. The light from above, though promising, seemed to flicker and dance, as if distorted by an unseen force, casting long, menacing shadows that seemed to grasp at them with spectral fingers. The air grew cooler as they climbed. The oppressive heat of the chamber below, replaced by a chill that seemed to seep into their bones. The shaft twisted and turned, its walls narrowing and then widening, as if the very earth was alive, its ancient heart beating in rhythm with their own mounting terror. Halfway up, they encountered a ledge, a small reprieve in their desperate climb. The shaft here branched into two, a split path that offered no clues as to which way led to safety. The right passage emitted a faint, eerie glow, reminiscent of the phosphorescent light from the chamber below, while the left was cloaked in an impenetrable darkness that seemed to swallow even the faint light from above. Debating their next move, they heard a sound that chilled their blood a low, rumbling growl that echoed up from the depths of the shaft, a stark reminder of the entity that they had hoped was buried in the collapse. The sound was not just a call of rage or hunger, it was a promise of pursuit, an assurance that their escape had not gone unnoticed. With little time to weigh their options, they chose the path cloaked in darkness, hoping the absence of the unnatural glow meant it was further removed from the malevolent forces below. The passage was narrow, forcing them to proceed in single file, their hands brushing against the cold, damp walls for guidance. As they delved deeper into the darkness, the air grew thick, making each breath a labor. Whispering voices seemed to echo in the gloom, words unintelligible, but tone unmistakably menacing. 
shadows moved at the edge of their vision. Shapes that were never quite there when they turned to look, but whose presence was an ever-growing weight on their already burdened minds. The passage began to slope upwards, the incline steep and treacherous, the ground beneath them loose and shifting. They scrambled upwards, their fingers clawing for purchase on the slippery surface, the darkness around them a tangible force, pressing in, suffocating. Suddenly, Alex's foot slipped, sending a cascade of stones clattering down the passage. The sound was deafening in the enclosed space. A cacophony that seemed to trigger a response from the depths of the tunnel. The growling returned, louder and closer than before, accompanied by a rapid, skittering sound, as if something large was moving swiftly through the darkness towards them. Panic took hold as they realized their ascent had become a race, not just towards the light and safety, but away from the darkness and the horrors it concealed. The passage seemed to narrow further, the walls closing in, as if the very earth was conspiring to halt their escape. The story leaves them in this desperate climb, the light above a fading promise, the darkness below an ever-present threat, their fate and the nature of the entity that hunts them remains uncertain. The tunnel, a liminal space between safety and peril, each step forward a defiance of the darkness that seeks to reclaim them. The tale of Starbuck's horror continues to unfold a narrative of fear and survival that is far from its conclusion. Their desperate ascent through the narrowing passage was marked by the sound of their labored breathing and the distant, relentless pursuit that echoed from the depths below. The passage twisted and turned, its confining walls pressing in as if to squeeze the very hope from their hearts. The darkness was absolute, a suffocating blanket that rendered them blind, each step a leap of faith into the unknown. Sarah, leading the way, felt the oppressive weight of the darkness, like a physical burden, each breath a struggle against the fear that threatened to overwhelm her. The whispers in the gloom grew louder of voices that seemed to mock their plight, their words indecipherable, but their intent maliciously clear. As they pressed on, the passage began to incline more steeply, the ground beneath their feet treacherous with loose stones and earth. The air grew colder, a bone-chilling cold that seeped through their clothes sapping their strength and dulling their senses. Suddenly, Mia slipped, her cry of alarm muffled by the oppressive air. Alex, just behind her, managed to catch her arm, preventing her fall. But the sudden movement dislodged a section of the passage wall. A cascade of stones and earth fell, revealing a small cavity in the wall from which a faint, greenish light emanated. Driven by a mixture of curiosity and desperation, they paused to investigate. The cavity opened into a small chamber, its walls lined with the same phosphorescent fungus that had illuminated the underground chamber below. The light cast an eerie glow, revealing the chamber's contents. A collection of objects seemed out of place in the bowels of the earth. A rusted watch, a child's doll with one eye missing, a book with pages yellowed by time, each item seemingly mundane, but charged with an inexplicable sense of dread. 
The growling from below grew louder, closer, a reminder of the danger that pursued them. Yet, the chamber offered a momentary refuge, a place to catch their breath and gather their courage as they huddled together. The whispers in the darkness grew more insistent, the voices now discernible as pleading, warning, begging them to leave, to escape the darkness that sought to claim them. With a sense of urgency born of fear, they left the chamber, continuing their climb towards the elusive promise of daylight. The passage seemed to respond to their presence, the walls pulsing with a malevolent energy, the very air charged with a sense of imminent threat. The light from above began to grow brighter, a sign that they were nearing the surface. But with it came an intensification of the pursuit. The growling was now accompanied by a sound like the beating of wings, a palpable force that seemed to drive them upwards, herding them towards an unknown fate. As they neared the end of the passage, the ground beneath them gave way suddenly. Collapsing into a cavernous space below, they found themselves on the edge of a precipice, the ground crumbling beneath their feet, the darkness below an abyss that promised oblivion. The story leaves them teetering on the brink, the light of day just beyond reach, the darkness below a maw ready to consume them. Their escape balanced on a knife edge between salvation and damnation. The narrative of Starbuck's horror remains fraught with peril. The journey from darkness into light fraught with uncertainty and fear. A tale yet to find its conclusion. Perched precariously on the crumbling edge of the precipice, Sarah, Alex, and Mia stared into the abyss below, its depths shrouded in impenetrable darkness. The light from above seemed both tantalizingly close and infinitely distant, a beacon of hope that was mercilessly out of reach. The sounds of their unseen pursuer echoed up from the depths, a cacophony of growls and the unsettling beat of wings seemed to reverberate through the very air. In a desperate bid for escape, they scanned the edges of the precipice for any sign of a path or foothold that might offer passage to safety. To their right, a narrow ledge wound its way along the wall of the cavern, a precarious route that offered the only visible means of continuing their ascent. With no other options, they began to inch their way along the ledge, their backs pressed against the cold, damp rock face, the drop to the abyss yawning just inches from their feet. The ledge was barely wide enough to support them, each movement a careful, measured risk. As they progressed, the growling from below grew more distant, but the sense of imminent danger did not abate. The air was thick with a palpable sense of malevolence, as if the very darkness was alive with hostile intent. The whispers returned, now a chorus of voices that seemed to emanate from the rock itself, words of warning, of despair, that seemed to seep into their minds, sowing seeds of doubt and fear. Suddenly. The ledge beneath Alex gave way, a crumbling of stone and earth that sent him sprawling, his fingers clawing desperately for purchase, Sarah and Mia, reacting with instinctive terror, managed to grasp his hands, their combined weight teetering dangerously on the brink of the abyss. Their precarious hold was all that stood between Alex and the dark void below. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, a frenzied cacophony that 
seemed to push against them, as if seeking to tip them into the darkness. With a Herculean effort, Sarah and Mia pulled Alex back onto what remained of the ledge, their hearts pounding with the exertion and the terror of the near miss. They lay there for a moment, gasping for breath, the reality of their situation settling upon them with a crushing weight. Gathering their remaining strength, they continued along the ledge, the path before them growing ever more treacherous, the rock face jutting out in sharp angles that forced them to contort their bodies in unnatural ways to pass. The light from above began to flicker, as if obscured by something moving across it. A chill wind swept down the shaft, carrying with it the scent of the earth and something else, something foul and decayed. The beating of wings grew louder, more urgent, a storm of sound that seemed to fill the cavern with its fury. As they neared the end of the ledge, it became clear that the path did not continue. Instead, a sheer rock face rose before them, smooth and unyielding, the light from above shining just beyond its summit. The realization that their path was barred, that their escape might be impossible, settled upon them with a despair so deep it was almost palpable. The story leaves them at this impasse, the abyss at their backs, an insurmountable obstacle before them, and an unseen menace drawing ever closer. The tale of Starbuck's horror remains a testament to the enduring struggle against the darkness, a journey fraught with danger and the unknown, its conclusion yet to be written. Faced with the sheer rock face and the dwindling ledge, Sarah, Alex, and Mia felt the weight of desperation closing in. The flickering light from above, now obscured intermittently by an unseen force, seemed to mock their plight, offering a glimpse of freedom that was just out of reach. The wind howled through the cavern, carrying with it the stench of decay and the relentless beating of wings, a harbinger of the malevolent presence that pursued them. In a moment of clarity, amidst the encroaching despair, Sarah noticed a series of small, almost imperceptible indentations in the rock face, remnants of an ancient, eroded path, or perhaps the handholds of a long-forgotten escape route. With no other options, and the sounds of their pursuer drawing ever closer, they made a silent pact to attempt the impossible climb to reach for the light that promised escape from the darkness below. One by one, they began to scale the rock face, their fingers finding purchase in the tiny crevices, their feet bracing against precarious protrusions. The task was Herculean. Each movement was a test of strength and will, the risk of a fatal slip ever present in their minds. The whispers in the darkness grew louder. A cacophony of voices that pleaded, warned, and threatened, seeking to sow doubt and fear with every handhold they grasped. As they climbed, the entity below unleashed a roar of frustration, the sound reverberating off the walls of the cavern, a physical force that threatened to shake them from their precarious holds. The beating of wings intensified, a maelstrom of sound that seemed to fill the cavern, the darkness below alive with malevolent intent. Halfway up the rock face, Mia's hand slipped, 
her grip failing for a heart-stopping moment. Her cry of fear was swallowed by the wind, her fall arrested by Alex's quick reflexes, his hand catching hers in a grip that spoke of desperation and determination. The near miss served only to fuel their resolve, their ascent becoming a race against the dark forces that sought to drag them back into the depths. The light from above grew stronger, more consistent, as they neared the cavern's opening, the sun's rays fighting to penetrate the gloom. But with the light came a new danger. The silhouette of a massive creature obscured the sun, its form casting a shadow that enveloped them in a momentary darkness. The creature, the source of the beating wings, was now between them and their only escape. Its intentions unknowable, but its presence undeniably threatening. The story leaves them there, clinging to the rock face, the light of day within reach, but guarded by a creature of the darkness. Their journey, a testament to human resilience, in the face of unfathomable terror, hangs in the balance. The conclusion of their tale, a thread woven into the fabric of the Starbucks horror narrative. A story eternally suspended between hope and despair, light and darkness, suspended perilously on the rock face, with the monstrous silhouette eclipsing the sun, Sarah, Alex, and Mia faced a new terror. The creature, vast and imposing, hovered at the mouth of the cavern, its wings beating with a force that sent gusts of wind howling down the shaft, threatening to dislodge them from their precarious holds. The creature's form was obscured by the backlight of the sun, but its size and the ominous sound of its wings spoke of a power that was ancient and formidable. The air around them vibrated with the creature's energy, a palpable force that seemed to press down upon them, heavy with malice. Despite the danger, the trio pressed on, their determination fueled by the instinct to survive, to escape the darkness that had pursued them through the depths of the earth. Each handhold, each precarious step upward, brought them closer to the light, to safety, but also closer to the creature that waited above. As they neared the top, the creature moved, its massive form shifting, casting swirling patterns of light and shadow across the cavern walls. It let out a sound, a deep, resonant call that seemed to resonate within the very stone call that was answered from the depths below by the growling entity they had hoped to escape. Caught between the emerging threat from below and the unknown creature above, Sarah, Alex, and Mia realized the full extent of their predicament. The cavern had become a battleground, a nexus of ancient forces that they could neither understand nor control. With a final, desperate effort, they reached the lip of the cavern. The creature, sensing their approach, reared back, its massive wings unfurling to reveal its true form. It was a being of nightmares, its body covered in scales that glittered like obsidian, its eyes burning with an intelligence that was not human, but no less cunning. For a moment, time seemed to stand still, the creature studying them with an inscrutable gaze, its intentions unclear. The wind from its wings was a gale that threatened to sweep them back into the abyss, yet it made no move to attack. Its presence, an enigma that filled the air with tension 
below, the sounds of the pursuing entity grew louder, a reminder of the relentless darkness that sought to claim them. Above, the creature waited, a guardian of the threshold between the world of light and the depths of shadow. The story pauses here, on the precipice of revelations, with Sarah, Alex, and Mia suspended between the dual threats of the darkness below and the creature above, their fate and the nature of the ancient forces at play remain shrouded in mystery. The narrative of Starbucks horror, a tapestry of fear and wonder that continues to unfold.